Hi everyone, this is Aspie Gamer Girl and today we are going to have a chat with Kerry King and Greg Morris, the brains behind Samurai Brothers. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for similar content. Samurai Brothers is a game for 2 to 6 players in which the player that defeats all other Samurai players or collects all the heirlooms wins. The game is available on Kickstarted until August 31st. I guess it's been almost three years now that I was experimenting with the idea of creating a game. The first two were kind of not so good, so didn't pursue those. But the third one um, seemed to have some promise, was kind of based on all the things that I liked, like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, um, Marvel Comics, Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes from G.I. Joe. So just kind of all the things that I grew up liking, enjoying, um, comic books, things like that. Basic concept was I wanted more than one way to win. So you can either collect all the heirloom the heirlooms to win or defeat everybody else. Gary brought me on just over a year ago to help turn his game into something that mechanically works. And so um, basically I didn't start with any ideas. I started with his ideas and then we just worked to break the game in as many ways as we possibly could. So we'd just play test it, we would break the game, we'd find out what was wrong with it. We met about 20 to 30 people at Gen Con last year and just asked people to play our game and a bunch of them did and we got a bunch of feedback from that. And I guess my role was just the general concept and the overall feel of the game and the uh, kind of the world that it lives in. My job was to make sure that we could get mechanically working and we would work through OP cards, over powerful cards, make sure we didn't have anything that the goal of getting a card became more important than the goal of winning the game and then balancing the the action deck specifically there was going to be a good balance of the game would constantly be progressing forward throughout it how did you decide to work together well we met in, in a facebook group was dedicated to resellers my goal was to buy from the manufacturer and sell you know directly on amazon kind of got tired of that idea um, of selling other people's products and i thought Mm, I think, you know, I can do something better or at least just as good. But when I started posting uh, pictures of my artwork and the game and things like that, he made a couple of comments saying, hey, uh, I want to join up maybe next time, maybe next game. I got to the point where I decided I need help this this game. <laughs> so I don't want to wait till next time. Um, I need someone that can take it further than I can. So you told me that you started working on this project three years ago, right? Yeah, it was about three years ago. Um, the first idea that I came up with um, was a book that transitioned into a comic book. And I actually did produce that and launch a Kickstarter for that. And uh, it successfully funded. But during that process is when I also came up with the idea of the board game. How has been the process of developing the board game? I think a big part of it was just listening to people as they played. So we just learned a lot by listening. And so by listening, people would say, oh, we like this, we didn't like this. And, you know, one of the, the original mechanics in the game was when you attack someone, you get to choose where that person takes the damage. And we got tons of pushback from that right away because we were saying, well, it's my board. You don't get to tell me how to play my card. The game starts, you, you draft a samurai, a sensei, an heirloom, and a guard. There's only six to choose from, but that means that there's over 1,200 different combinations of what you can start your game with. We've even heard that from some of our reviewers. You know, on the surface, it kind of looks like a party game, but once you play it, then you start to realize the depth of strategy that's within it. How did you choose the team of the game? Like, why Japanese? Why ninjas? Why babies? Well, originally, the game was actually called Chubby Ninjas. Um, so I just thought it would be really funny to have ninjas that were babies, that had a pacifier, that had a diaper, uh, a full-on baby that were somehow ninjas. Um, just that idea seemed kind of comical and fun. Um, full disclosure, I had a ninja suit in elementary school. So I had a full um, ninja suit, I had a wooden sword, and would run around the woods and play ninja. So, you know, that was a huge part of my history. It, it just kind of integrating all the things that I liked into a game. Craig had to come along and fix <laughs> all my crazy ideas and make it function. But, you know, thankfully, uh, you know, I was able to come up with the kind of world and concept. So going forward, the next game, we're not going to create the art first. We're, we will make sure the game functions mechanically first, and then we can 
add the uh, the layers of art and things like that. So you are planning to work in the future together again in another game. That's that is that is the plan and the hope. So um, the goal of of course getting this first game off the ground and um, getting into the hands of people that they can just really start playing and enjoying it like our family does and family always gets it and you know my wife's like oh, I'm ready to go to bed can we play Samurai Brothers just one more time <laughs> and uh, it's, it's become kind of this enjoyable thing that we do as a family and something that we want to be able to share with other people too. So far what has been the most challenging part? I would say all the behind the scenes details I won't speak for Carrie on this one <laughs> see a polished Kickstarter page you look at it and you're like wow they had some really good artists some good people and you don't really think about all the decisions that went on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. You have to care about who your manufacturer is, you have to care about how you're going to ship it from your manufacturer to your distributor, how you're going to distribute it, how you're going to take care of taxes and VAT and all these kind of the not fun part of making it work. Realizing that there's so many other pieces but we got to you know how do we cover the costs and how do we cover the expenses and, and things like that and I think that's You know, at times it can be kind of a little frustrating. You're like, well, it's, it's so close to being able to get this in people's hands. Mm -hmm. um, but then to actually be able to do that, that's that's the part that, that I think sometimes people don't really think about. I am from Colombia, and I have noticed that mm -hmm. some, most of the time the chip to Latin America is more expensive than the game itself. You asked me earlier, what do I get most excited about? I enjoy the idea of building a world with characters that have personality that have a backstory so i really get excited every time what um, we get new art from one of our artists i like the idea that anybody playing the game would be able to find themselves as one of the characters we want you know inclusion we want diversity we want representation um, that's really important to, to us as well Because of your background with comics, this is why the art came first on the game? Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, I wanted the characters to come first. <laughs> I just focused on mechanics as much. One of the first versions was basically one sensei. You get the sensei and you hold on to it to win. Um, it was just, you know, Craig, Craig immediately broke it and said, okay, well, this isn't working. How can we fix it? So yes, that's how the art came first. I just wanted to build that world that they live within. When did you guys decide that the game was ready for Kickstarter? I don't know if we ever decided that we were ready. Um, <laughs> but I, I think we decided that if we didn't just pick a date, we were never going to be ready. I think our initial plan was we were going to be going to Gen Con live this year, and we were going to take basically the final prototype there. None of that played out. And so mm -hmm. we're just like, well, you know what, we're not going to get that last little bit that we wanted so i think it was i don't know around may we waited basically till we heard what was going on with gen con and once gen con canceled we're like you know what we're not going to wait another year to, let's just go with it the sooner we launch we're either going to find out that we've got something that people want or we're, we're going to find out that they like it and we need to retool it or whatever but let's just let's find out what it is we're looking forward to what we You know, hopefully the funding of the Kickstarter, but regardless of whether it funds or not, what we can learn, what we're learning about our fans, our audience, what people are looking for, what they like about it. And we're just really excited at, at whatever point in time we can to get this into the hands of people uh, to really play it and enjoy it the way we do. Can you guys give us a little sneak peek on the stretch goals or their secret? Yeah, no, I mean, we won't give the specifics, oh. um, but mm -hmm. I'll just say that the art guy was in charge of the stretch goals. <laughs> um, the, and we've shared this with, with our fans, so we can share it here too. Our, the dream and the vision for the game is that every single card has a unique piece of art. Even if it's a card that does the same thing as another card, that basically when you play the game, it feels like a comic book. It feels like you're telling a story. So the stretch goals, once we get to that point, um, are really about unlocking unique artwork. Well, we're really, really hoping that we can we can get this campaign funded and hit the stretch goals because if you love the art of what you see, um, I forget what the number is, but it's I think we have about 70 more pieces of art I think that we would love to add into the game. I saw the new art of the box that oh, yeah, holds. Yeah. Really nice, yeah. guys. <laughs> Thank you. Like Anything else that you would like to add or share with us? No? Uh, if, if you're watching, listening, whatever, and we just ask you, hey, back us, give us a chance. Give us a chance to see this game in action. Um, we're, we're, uh, we're learning as we go. We know we don't have everything figured out, but we've 
We've listened to people's feedback all along the way. Um, we're implementing ideas, design ideas, mechanics ideas. But um, we just, yeah, join us. And, and really the, the, the thing we've been saying constantly is help us bring this world to life. Help right. us bring this world to life. And we need your help to do it because we can't, we can't do it on our own. We need your help. Yeah, I mean, the other thing is, you know, you know, we have other things like Samurai Sisters. We have other potential games. Yeah, the ideas are plenty. We've got to we've got to get this first one funded so we can get things to to roll from there. Can I hear a little bit about Samurai uh, Sisters? Um, do you got me there? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, so so there's, the, there's a few different versions, I think. Yeah, there's a couple different versions. We're still working through because obviously we want to we need the first game to exist, but. Um, Basically, what we're saying is while all these samurais are, are fighting, they, there's also six sisters who are basically trying to maintain order and actually keep the kingdom afloat. And so we've talked about different things about, you know, a financial system that's going on within the world, you know, trade. The gist of the story is while all these samurai brothers are out fighting and beating each other up, it's really the women who are keeping everything going strong in the kingdom. Right. And that's that's the that's the nature of the story. All the specific mechanics are still the. It sounds really excited and really really happy to hear about Samurai <laughs> Sisters. <laughs> Thank you so much okay. for taking the time. I really yeah. appreciate it, and good luck with the campaign. All right. Thank, Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Bye.